There's tons of co-op games to pick from. You and your friends versus zombies, aliens, and pretty much anything else you can think of. But with so many of them, it can be hard to choose which ones to play, especially when you factor in price, number of players, and if it's even fun or not. This is a series where I will cover all of those things and more so that you and your friends can find your next co-op game. Today's game is Dead Space 3. This isn't just some random planet, Isaac. They found the source, the marker homeworld. Ellie, oh Isaac's. Hey, Isaac. Dead Space 3, the third game in a trilogy that I feel like a lot of people have forgotten about over the years. One thing that has stood the test of time though, is the third game's co-op mode, which after playing through it again made me really appreciate this series even more. The Dead Space series are third-person survival horror games, but the third game while still having those horror elements, spooky monsters, jump scares, etc, definitely ended up being more of an action game overall. And depending on who you ask, this is a good or bad thing with many of the fans of the series not liking the changes since the games have always been about pure horror. The first game released back in 2008, and the final third game that I'll be talking about today came out in early 2013. They also recently announced a remake of the first game, and while both it and the second game are great in their own right, I'm not here to talk about them for one main reason. There is no co-op in them. Dead Space 3 was the first and only of them to have co-op as an option. But it's not some half-assed co-op like Mario Galaxy where player 2 is just shooting star bits at enemies. It's actually good. The gameplay in Dead Space 3 consists of you traveling around a spaceship graveyard, as well as a snowy planet, completing various objectives while solving some very light puzzles. There are also some really cool action sequences mixed in, like this one where you're flying like Iron Man, dodging bombs, and- Oh shit! I died. And that's something you'll probably be doing a lot of. But it's usually more because of these guys, the Necromorphs. Tons of freaky, mutated, grotesque monsters that come in all kinds of shapes and sizes. You'll spend the majority of the game shooting these guys, and they are definitely fun to shoot. Depending on where you hit them, limbs and other body parts will go flying, some of which can be even grabbed using a telekinesis ability and then shot back at them. And this also pairs really well with your other ability, Stasis, which lets you slow down enemies for a bit. And all of this paired together makes for really satisfying gunplay. During the game you'll also be opening a lot of things and smashing a lot of boxes and corpses, both to make sure that they're actually dead and to find supplies like ammo, health, resources, and weapon parts. The resources and weapon parts are pretty important since they can be used at crafting tables placed throughout the game and let you change your weapons drastically, like making it so that the top half of your gun is a crazy powerful shotgun while the bottom half becomes like a gatling gun of needles. The weapon crafting can be somewhat intimidating though since the combinations are pretty much endless, but you can totally just stick whatever you find onto your gun, that's what I do sometimes and it usually works out okay. Although if you do take the time to learn it, you can make some pretty cool stuff. The spacesuit can also be upgraded, as well as changed into something more aesthetically pleasing as you find more throughout the game. But why are you doing all these things you may ask? Who am I? The series follows protagonist Isaac Clarke as he... Um... In all honesty, I really don't know what's going on in these games. I don't think it's that the plot is too hard to follow. I think it's just that I'm usually more focused on not dying. From my limited understanding, you play as Isaac Clark, an engineer who after answering a ship's distress call in the first game, quickly learns that its inhabitants have been killed by mutated creatures called necromorphs. Or they themselves were mutated into the necromorphs. Or maybe a mix of the two. It's a little blurry. By the third game though, the necromorphs have been messing with Isaac for two whole games. But this time he doesn't have to suffer alone. In Dead Space 3, he's paired up with a new character called John Carver. And this is who player two takes control of. So now you get to fight all the spooky monsters with a friend. And having co-op as an option in Dead Space 3 makes the game so much more appealing in my opinion. It is a horror game though, so of course adding that extra player will make the game less scary, but mostly because you can rely on someone having your back. Sometimes. Not completely less scary though, which is a good thing, but it definitely changes the atmosphere of the game world overall. The puzzle solving is also slightly different with two people, and by no means are the puzzles in this game complex. Like, look at this. We're just clicking A on the highlighted ones. Is this even a puzzle? It's mostly just instead of you pull this thing and hold this button yourself, one of you pulls this thing while the other holds the button. And this is fine, it's nothing spectacular. I find that the best co-op stuff in this game happens when you're just shooting enemies. It feels really good when you're working as a team. And of course just messing around, showing off the really cool suit you got, or the gun that you just spent 30 minutes making and is actually not very good. Again, this really takes you out of the horror part of it, but it's okay because it's still fun. 
The last thing I'll mention is that they really made the game with co-op in mind. One of my favorite things about the co-op in this game is that Player 2 slash Carver are their own character. Like, Carver will have hallucinations, and whoever is playing as Isaac can't see them on their screen. And this is fucking cool. Sometimes they even lead into side missions that you wouldn't be able to do in single player. Even other small stuff like the guys getting knocked off a cliff and then climbing up from different spots. Just both players seeing something slightly different is pretty cool in my opinion. Also, at one point my girlfriend was slightly ahead of me and triggered a cutscene that should probably have had Isaac in it, but Carver was there first, so Isaac's just like getting flung around in the background. And this stuff's great. It's so subtle, but it really gives player two some weight as a character. They're not just like there, they're not just gooey one final thing I need to mention is that there is story DLC for this game called Awakened. While I haven't actually played it yet, I do know it takes place after the main story, which, without spoiling anything, does feel like it ends very abruptly. So if you're going into this game and you want the full experience, you may want to get this too. Anyhow, that's the end of me talking about the game, so now onto the stuff you need to know to play it. How many players is it? Dead Space 3's co-op mode allows for up to two players to play together. Player 1 will always be Isaac, and Player 2 will be Carver. Is there split screen? Sadly, no, there is no split screen whatsoever in this game. Kind of feel like there should be since it's so co-op focused. But yeah, you'll either need two computers or two consoles to play with a friend. How difficult is it? The game starts with three difficulties, casual through hard. And then after you beat the game once on any of these, you unlock impossible. Once again, we're playing on normal and we even struggled a few times. What modes are there? Uh, there is only the campaign, which apparently lasts around 12 hours, but I would say with side missions, it's closer to 15 to 18. But like how the impossible difficulty unlocks after beating the game once, a few variants of the campaign unlock as well. Upon beating the game once, you get access to the following. New Game Plus, where you can bring all the weapons and suits you had over to a new playthrough. Classic Mode, where you can't play co-op. Why is this even here? And you also can't craft weapons as the game restricts you to making guns that were available in the first game, among other things. Pure survival mode, where enemies don't drop supplies and health and ammo must be crafted instead of just being found lying around. Yeah, no thanks. And finally, there's hardcore mode, which I don't even know who is watching this video who would ever want to try this. We're just here to play co-op games. But it makes you restart the entire game if you even die once. But it's got co-op. What is it available on? Firstly, Dead Space 3 is available for PC through the Origin Store as well as Steam. The Steam version still has to go through Origin to be played though, so you'll have to make an account on there regardless. It's also available on the Xbox 360, and in turn through backwards compatibility, the other Xbox consoles. And from what I can tell, all the Xbox versions can connect and play together. And it's also available on PS3, but PlayStation doesn't have backwards compatibility, so that's it for that. I bought mine on Origin originally, while my girlfriend bought her copy on Steam, and they work together fine, if you had some kind of doubt about that. I just have to invite her from the game or from the Origin app itself. I can't do it through Steam. Is there controller support? For the PC version of the game, yes, there is controller support. And from what I remember, it works exactly like it did on the 360. The price. From what I can find, this game sits around $26.99 in Canadian dollars, which is like $22 for you Americans, on almost every platform. I did see on the winter sale that it went up to 70% off, and 68% for the full game with the Awakened DLC included. So I'll assume that this is as cheap as you can get it. Disc versions would probably be even cheaper though at your local game store, but regardless you would still need two consoles to play together, like the Xboxes, since there's no split screen. And there's no crossplay between any of the consoles or PC if you were wondering. Overall, I think this is just one of those games that plays a lot better with a friend. Which is fair, because this one was actually made with co-op in mind. And it's fun. I haven't played it since it first came out in 2013, but I actually think I had more fun going through it this time, even though we didn't really know what was going on plot-wise. As I said last time, let me know if there are any co-op games that you would recommend that I cover in the future, and if you end up playing Dead Space 3. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.